most times, you see, all these things that has to do with motherhood, once you've gone past it, you forget. That's how nature is. You forget. And because you forget, you open your leg again. Yakata. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Lade Olabi. I make videos about faith, lifestyle, motherhood, marriage, relationships, and everything in between. As you can already tell from the title of this video, this video is about breastfeeding. What nobody told me. What they didn't tell me. <laughs> so without any further ado, let's go get into the video. So what inspired this video? Yesterday, just yesterday, because I'm posting this video the next day, I put up a vlog as to you know documenting how i went about weaning my second baby from breastfeeding um, and i just had so much to say in that vlog that i said i'm going to have a sit down one-on-one -on -one chit chat video with you guys and i did take notes so that i i won't you know go all over the place so i'm ready let's talk quickly about breastfeeding right just basic things about breastfeeding what is breastfeeding so breastfeeding is the process of feeding a baby an infant through the breast milk from his or her mother so the breast milk the milk that comes from his or her mother that's what breastfeeding is um, however i understand and i know that a lot of in some countries you can buy breast milk you can buy colostrum that's the first one that comes out to cs and i know some people overproduce so when some people overproduce and they have a stash they sell to like orphanages um, they sell to the NICU, they sell to hospitals for babies who probably even lost their parents at birth or their mother rather. A, a person's mother, you could also feed a child milk that doesn't come from the mother. That also happened in my family. So my sister and I, one time my sister came for my second baby's um, naming ceremony, which is eight days after the baby's born. She fed my baby. I was in the bathroom and I fed her baby. Her baby was six months older either six or eight months older than my baby. So she had a six month old or an eight month old, I, I forget now. And then I had a newborn, she fed my newborn, I fed her baby. It's something we've always wanted to do because we also heard that our mom and our auntie did this with our cousin and our brother. So we just really wanted to, we heard, we don't even know if it's true. That proves to show that your breast milk is not only for your own child. There is exclusive breastfeeding and then there's partial breastfeeding. Exclusive means you're giving that baby only breast milk. Yes, only breast milk, no water, nothing else, nothing else, just breast milk. And that happened for me for seven months. I exclusively fed my baby for seven months. Uh, my second baby, my first, I did also seven months. Partial breastfeeding is giving the baby breast milk and maybe formula. And sometimes the reason for this is maybe because the mom is working or maybe because the mom is not producing as much or maybe because the mom is not alive. So, the World Health Organization and UNICEF recommend six months. They recommend six months for exclusive breastfeeding. That means giving the baby just breast milk without any water without any food what are some of the advantages of breastfeeding it helps to fight off sicknesses and diseases it builds the child immune system now, to the crux of the matter weaning right wow. weaning that word weaning so what is weaning right i looked online it is the introduction of solids and other foods to baby and a process is a process of switching an infant's diet in this regard right for the purpose of this video weaning is the stoppage <laughs> of breastfeeding so let me just give you the gist summary in summary what happened with my first baby as compared to my second baby and why this was such a big deal and why i decided that i'm going to document this and i'm going to help other mothers who like me um they know this you know i learned by experience you don't have to learn by experience all right um so now for my first baby zoe she's now five she was going to be six in a few months maybe three months she'll be six years old um so i stopped breastfeeding her i completely stopped breastfeeding her at the age of 11 months particularly for zoe i remember there was one thing that happened that i knew that i'm done and that was we were at church and she made it a habit she would come up to me and lift if i was wearing a top she would lift my top and that was when i was like nah this one is too embarrassing um so i was like mm -mm. So I decided and then we made it happen. With my first baby, I did not realize that I had something called um, a traumatic weaning experience. So I had weaning trauma um, and it was traumatic because of 
the following reasons. So it was traumatic because um, I didn't know what to expect as much. So of course, I knew that, you know, sometimes when you go out for, for some hours and then you don't give your baby or you don't express according to your schedule, then um, you get engorged. So in the 11 months, I'd felt what being engorged meant like, but I didn't quite realize what the emotional roller coaster would be like when we are eventually stopping breastfeeding. At the point where I decided that I was going to stop breastfeeding my baby, I went to see my parents in Lagos at the time and I was with them. I remember my husband and I were downstairs. We would sleep downstairs, she would sleep upstairs with my mom. Um, and I just thought it would just take, you know, one night, two nights, she'll forget about it. But for me, it made me so sick. I was engorged and it was really bad because like the thing was dragging me. <laughs> if you've seen my vlog from like winning my second baby, then you understand what I mean by the dragging pain, like a thurbing pain. It was really bad. It was, it was very bad. And beyond the physical pain, there is an emotional side of it that nobody tells you because most times, you see, all these things that has to do with motherhood, once you've gone past it, you forget. That's how nature is. You forget. And because you forget, you open your leg again. Yakata. So, from, I remember in that season, my mom just used to say, oh, just take paracetamol. Oh, just take something for pain. Oh, just take something for pain. Just take something for pain. Just take ibuprofen. Just take something for pain. Um, and I did. But then you can't express, because if you express, that means, because the breast works with demand and supply. And if you express that means you're telling the nerves you're telling the brain of the breast that i am letting it out meaning there is a demand and then since there is a demand there will be a supply so for that there was this one particular incident in the car uh, my baby was crying for me she was crying for me and she was reaching out to me and i was in so much pain i don't know i had not taken the medication at that point i was in so much pain she was crying, reaching out to me, and I was reaching out to her to even comfort her. And the way my mom shouted on me, oh my god, oh my god, because you don't, you don't even know the emotional roller coaster of you're trying to help your baby. Your baby is crying because of something you can do, but you can't do that thing <laughs> because of a decision that you have made. So you have to watch your baby cry, and if you are not ready to manage your physical pain plus the emotional need of your baby wanting you then it will become something else so for me that was the traumatic point i didn't even realize so that it was just like a shouting back and forth and i remember it pained me you know how something pain it hurt me that day uh, but we moved past it and after a few days i don't even remember everything was fine she stopped asking for it but you see with my second <laughs> so this was a totally different topic because for her I told you my first, I didn't quite, I just said, okay, so since most people in the family said before your first birthday, I was just like, okay, before first birthday. But with the second, before I had her, I'd had two miscarriages. So I, I waited, we waited a bit before we had our second baby. At the time when we were having our second baby, I'd read a lot. I was well informed. I knew what I wanted. And one of those things that I, I was very sure about was I wanted to feed my baby for two years. Two years, yes. I wanted to feed my baby for two years. And so I decided that I was going to do it. I was going to gather all my willpower. And the main reason is because I wanted that bond. Because that time of breastfeeding is a time of bonding. Like you get to look into that child's eye. The child is looking at your eye throughout. But you get to look into the child's eye. And it's just really beautiful. So that's what I wanted. Fast forward to reality. So um, for the advantages really awesome she didn't used to fall sick i think she fell sick only once and it was just like she had a fever that's all half falling sick you just have a little fever and then she'll get better so i saw that the breast milk was really doing very well for her and i wanted to continue it but guys it got very frustrating it got very frustrating and then she has started wearing teeth so she sometimes she would latch and then use her the this the two main teeth in the front i don't know what they're to grip my breast my nipple rather and then it will cause me to have bruises and it used to be very very painful and you know just the embarrassing part of her asking it. and she would throw a tantrum the what i imagined was that if she wants to suck she would call me like 
especially when she has understanding, but she just didn't have understanding. And I was getting tired. I was getting exhausted. I was getting, I was getting weary. And the thought of um, two years left my mind a long time ago, maybe three months ago. But then the fear of, am I ready to be engorged? Am I ready to cry and have her cry and not be there for her when she needs me? That emotional roller coaster was also there. Um, let me just state here that I had a chance where I could have stopped this breastfeeding, but I was on vacation with my husband. We were gone for about five days, four to five days, and that would have been the best time because I was not anywhere close to her. It would have been the best time for me to stop, but I wasn't ready to stop. I guess emotionally and mentally, I was not ready to stop, so I didn't stop. So how was I able to keep the flow? I continued to demand. So I was always pumping and I'll express the milk and then I'll pour it away. There wasn't any major freezer. I didn't need to freeze it. She was doing well. She ate. Um, she's very picky with eating as compared to my first. She's very picky. She doesn't like to eat. Um, she would just play with the food, give it to the dogs, um, come and mess with our food when we're eating. But it was very different for my first. And I guess that's why for hers, the transition was a bit easy so it's still a bit of a challenge my children don't they don't want any the only cereal they like is golden one right now Dion she doesn't want pap she doesn't want custard she doesn't want oat milk nothing not even tea not even milk the other day I gave her milk and she was giving her her dolly so it, it just got to the point where I felt like ah no I can't do this anymore and then I went to see one of my mentors mommy Wale Akirobi and we we're just having a casual conversation and she was asking about the children and I said, I'm tired, I'm tired. And I was trying to explain to her and she said, ah, it's just all in your head. All you need to do is just make a decision. I'm like, ah, how can it be that simple of just make a decision? So I left her office on a, th on a Thursday and I, I made up my mind. I said, you know what, I'm going to make this decision. But I needed to put some things in place to make sure that emotionally um, we're all covered. So I left her office on Thursday. I did not quite think that I will just do it. But by Friday, I went to the office. I bet you Friday morning, I had no idea I was going to stop breastfeeding my daughter. I can't even remember. I would have documented properly the last time I gave her breast milk. But it was Friday before I left home. And once I left home, that was it. I gave it to her. In the morning on Friday, I was at the office and if you don't know, I work in Light Life Church and I was in the office and then we had an all night. So I decided to stay back till, excuse me, Saturday. Just go and see the vlog. You'll see the whole shebang and how it played off. She's still asking for it how many days after. So the last time she had, we call it Mama Juice. The last time she had Mama Juice was Friday morning and this is Wednesday. So she has not had it all day Friday. She has not had it Saturday. She has not had it Sunday. She has not had it Monday. She has not had it Tuesday. This is Wednesday. She has not had it in six days. But guess what? She's still asking. She's still asking for it like randomly once in a while, especially when she wants to sleep. Um, with my first, she was still taking the pacifier so I could, you know, make her sleep. But right now, when Zion wants to sleep, it's war. Um, but what has worked for us is strapping her on our backs. And so that's what I just wanted to talk about. Uh, emotionally, I really had to make sure. So it was it was daunting for me to see her. I was avoiding her, avoiding her. But by Sunday morning, please just go and see the vlog. By Sunday morning, I had to face my fears. I had to see her. And when I saw her, I gave her a hug. You know, that was therapeutic for me too because I, I missed her. You know, I gave her a hug and I was there for her. And I, you know, just spoke to her. And these children, they understand. So I just told her, no more. No more mama juice and just like mommy wally said to give her another juice and say this is juice now and so i gave her and i said this is your juice now so that's how i was able to win my second baby i'm so happy i was able to make this video thank you so much for watching um uh, if you're a mom you just watch the vlog there's so much i want to say but just watch the vlog watch the vlog i'm happy that i was able to document it in the vlog if you are trying to win your baby and you're finding it challenging i really pray that um, you garner the strength and the willpower to do it because that really that's what all you need and it just kind of encouraged me a lot because there's so much I want to do in my life that I realize that it's just a matter of a decision just a matter of a decision and you get it done one thing I cannot wait is my healthy lifestyle journey because breastfeeding will mess up with your diet breastfeeding will mess with like breast some people add more weight when they're breastfeeding than when they are um, pregnant. 
because you eat a lot because you have to feed your baby and for a picky baby like my baby who if i'm home she's not eating anything it's just breast milk breast milk breast milk then just imagine but right now hmm i'm giving it one week by friday oh ld lights you have started you have started thank you so much guys for watching please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up subscribe if you're not subscribed leave a comment let me know what you found interesting what you learned and until next time guys don't forget to be the best version of you